Hey everybody, welcome back to another quick tie with Tim here and Fly Fishing Board We're Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying, sponsored by Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Um, we're here today, we're gonna be going through this bad boy right here, the Western Green Drake. Um, it's a super cool little dry fly, we'll take you through that in a moment. Um, this is actually coming out of season five, episode 15, believe it or not. And we are tying out of our season five kit today. Okay, so although we're reaching the end of our season here pretty quickly, doesn't mean you can't still grab um, a kit. If you head on up to our website, all these quick ties for every single fly we've done all season is going to be there for you and available for you to tie from. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. It helps us a ton um, having you guys as part of this crew and leave a comment if you are um, part of the quick tie squad because we'd love to know that you're here as well. Well, let's head on over to the vise and get started. So you can see this little guy here. Um, we are tying this in a size today. This is a size six. No, I'm just kidding. It's a size 10. Size 10 is a pretty common uh, size for a green drake. You could even go upsize that for the green drakes that we have um, around here. So let's go ahead and get started. This is um, with most dry flies. We get a little bit more complicated um, in some of the techniques and the things we, we do with them. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as I can for you guys and show you it's not all that bad. Uh, today I'm going to be tying with some UTC 70. Um, I'm sticking with some black as what as I'm going to go with today. So let's go ahead. We're going to start that thread just behind the eye of the hook. Um, this is a eye turned down dry fly hook, which most of the dry fly hooks are. So let's come in here. We'll uh, trim out that tag end. Um, and the first thing we're actually going to tie in is going to be our tail. So I'm going to bring my thread back to about where that barb's sitting. Then I'll come back up to a mid fly. Um, now in your kit, you're going to see we have this black moose body hair. You can see a couple different patches like this, quite fine at the tips. Um, we don't want a super, super prominent tail, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab off a clump about that big, and I'm gonna do a little stack job on it and see um, what we can get out of it. But make sure you clean out the underside and the butts before you do that. And then I'm just gonna throw this in the hair stacker real quick and try to uh, get those tips nice and aligned for our tail. Give it a couple taps on the table and go ahead and grab it out of the stacker. Now I've kept the tips aligned in this hand. I'm going to go ahead again and try to clean out any of that excess that I can see right now. And I'm going to come check on the tail. So um, these green drakes do have a fairly prominent tail, but we don't need it to be quite that much. I actually just cut that in half. So I'm left with the boat like this. I'll show you against my white hands. You can see it a little better. Um, so not a, not a ton, and when we actually tie this in, it'll get even a little thinner as we compress it. So I'm going to bring my thread back to about a quarter of the way down the hook shank from the eye. Now I'm going to measure a tail that's a roughly a full hook shank in length, and I'm going to place that back here. That's going to be where it comes out the back, and I'm going to pinch and change hands. I'm going to do a gathering wrap, flare that a little bit, and then I'm going to start taking some wraps down the fly, all while holding that tail up. Now, this hair will compress and flare, so as I get near the tail, I, I kind of let off on the tension so that it doesn't um, flare as bad. So if I pull tight there, you can see it flares, versus if I take the pressure off of it, it'll settle and sit a little flatter. And that's what I want. I don't want it, the tail to flare too much. I want it to just sit as flat as possible. So I'm just taking some loose tension wraps when I get near the back there, and it should stay a little flatter, okay? Now I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to cut this tail fiber off right here. And I'm gonna come up the fly and just work some thread wraps. We're not too worried about the bulk here because we are gonna actually use a little bit more of that bulk as we get down and build the body, of the fly. But first, probably the most challenging part of this fly is gonna be building our wings. Okay, so you've got a, ch a section of deer hair in your kit as well. Um, and we're actually going to take a clump of this, tie it in, spread it out, get some wraps around it, and we're actually going to build uh, what's going to appear to be, like here, two wings on the front of the fly. It works itself right into the hackle, and it, uh, it looks pretty good. So go ahead and grab yourself a clump. This is a hard thing to know how much to grab because you do lose a little bit of it. Um, in, when you envision it, when you split it in half, you're actually losing half of it. So I grab a clump that's probably bigger than I need, and then I'll work with it but I'm keeping those tips aligned. I'm never gonna stack this per se. I'm just gonna keep it as aligned as I can when I get it off the patch. I'm gonna clean out all that underside. I'll get another look at it. Now, if I imagine this much split in half, 
It's probably a little bit of a heavy wing, so I'm gonna pull a little bit of that out. Not too, too much of it. But I just like to sit it in my hand and envision parting it and seeing how much is gonna be there. So that's probably still a little much, but I'll go with it right here. So now when I tie this in, I have to actually flip it around in my hands so that the butts are facing back down the fly, which can be a little bit of a process while keeping those tips aligned. But now that I got it switched around in my hand, you can see my tips are still fairly aligned. I'm gonna measure um, these wings to be just basically just under a full hook shank in length. So when I tied in it at this position, which is that quarter of the way back where I left my tail, when I tie it in there, it's gonna flare up and kind of get uh, all up in the way, but we're gonna work around it and I'll show you how some of my techniques to tame it down a bit. But we want it to be roughly a hook shank in length. So I'm gonna transfer it there. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna get that first wrap on it. It should all start to flare a bit. And while keeping my fingers attached back here, okay, so I still have my fingers um, on the back portion of the fly, I'm gonna reach in here with my scissors and I'm gonna cut a little taper in the hair without cutting the wing back down the fly. So I'm gonna use that as a little bit of bulk for creating the taper in the body. So as, I, as I'm here now, I'm just gonna start taking some wraps over that hair, up against where I left the hair, but just kind of securing those butts down, like so. And then I'm gonna grab all this hair and I'm just gonna basically pull up on it, push it up, keep it up like that. Um, I'm gonna drive a wedge in front of it with some thread wraps. Push that forward just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna lift it up. Again, need some of those thread wraps in front of it. And then I wanna lay it down so I can see all of those butts. And I wanna make sure I get some good thread wraps all over top of them, creating that nice little taper down to the body. So I just take a minute here, add lots of thread wraps here, right up against it. And now that I got that there, I can pull all of this up and drive a few thread wraps as a dam in front of it, which should help it stand up. Now, I'm gonna start off by taking some thread wraps, almost like I'm making a post out of this. So I don't wanna make them super tight because you know it will flare this hair, this kind of more fine hair. But I'm, like I did back here at the back of the fly, so I didn't flare the tail, I'm just taking some nice kind of light wraps right at the base. And then I'll take a couple around the actual hook shank to secure that in place. Um, but now if you see, that's one clump together. So what I wanna do is I wanna come in here, you could use a scissor point or whatever, and try to split those hairs evenly, as evenly as you can, and separate them. So they're out on their own. Now while I'm in this position and holding them, I'm gonna take a thread wrap actually right between them, almost like I would be tying on some dumbbell eyes. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna grab and hold them out of the way, separating them, and take a wrap like so. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process a few times. So hopefully I'm able to separate this wing, taking some thread wraps in a figure eight motion. making sure that those, so now if I show them to you, you can see that they're split. Okay, they're split and they're kind of on their own. Now, what I like to do right here is I like to come in with just a small dab of um, some UV resin. I'm actually <clears throat> gonna use my bodkin so I can really control that it's just a really small amount and I'm gonna split those hairs and get a drop of it right at the base. Now, the reason I do this is it's gonna help keep them separated and also it's gonna secure that base of that a little better. So I come in there, I secure that. And now if you take and look, you can see those wings splayed quite nicely. I can always put a little pressure and change them just a little bit. I'm actually really happy with how that one went. Not that everyone goes that way and you should know that. And I can promise you not every fly, even in preparation for tying this one for you guys, always looks perfect, okay? So give yourself a little bit of grace as you go through these patterns. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is in your kit you have a piece of floss. We gave this to you to create the segmentation in the body. Um, but one of the better options, we just gave you this so you had something to tie with, I like is just a piece of yellow thread. A little easier to work with, it's totally up to you, your choice which you wanna use. Um, just a piece of yellow thread or a yellow floss works just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and use this, uh, just this thread which is just a generic, this is a, a yellow 140 um, piece of thread. So I'm gonna bring my thread back behind the wing 
and I'm gonna tie in this yellow piece of thread all the way back to the tail. And now we're just about ready to build our body. So I'm gonna come in with this nice green, olive green dubbing we have here, a little brighter than a normal olive, um, which I really like. These green drakes, if you've ever seen one in person, they actually carry a really true green color. And I'm just gonna make a small dubbing noodle, okay? Um, so remember, I'm spinning that thread on always, or sorry, the dubbing on my thread always in the same direction, like so. I'm gonna make it a couple inches long, maybe three. You can always take some of this dubbing off. It's a dry fly dubbing, so it comes off pretty nice and easy. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna build my body out of it. And I wanna build a bit of a plump body, but it still has a little bit of taper. So a little thinner at the back, gaining some profile as I move up. So I'm gonna start my dubbing right there at the back. So it starts a little thinner, and then we're gonna grow it. And remember, we're gonna be bringing that thread over top of it, so it's actually gonna build, um, it's gonna build up some bulk for us, and we can tame it down with this. Okay, so once I get right up here, I'm gonna leave a little bit of space behind, um, behind the eye, or the eye, sorry, behind that wing. So I got a little too much dubbing there, like I said, so I'm gonna pull that off. Now I'm gonna take my thread, and I'm gonna palmer it forward, just nice open spiral. And as much tension as you want to will compress or not. Like so. Just gonna adjust that, so my wraps are a little more even. Like that. And then I'm gonna trap that off. Make sure I secure it. And then I'll come in here with my scissors and I'll trim that thread out. Always being really careful with that wing because we don't want to affect it too much. We did a lot of work to get it there. So I always find myself playing with it, kind of resetting it a bit as I go. Um, now we pretty much just have our hackle that we need to tie in um, to finish off this fly. So when you're choosing a hackle, um, we gave you just a couple options in here. One. Uh, m almost always it's a grizzly, so you can go with a white grizzly or green grizzly. Both look look pretty good, but when you're sizing them, um, if you're to bring it in, we've sized all the ones you already have, but if you can see here, I basically extended to the height of the wing, and that's what I want. I want this to come up right around the wing, um, so you're normally gonna oversize if like this is a size 10 hook. I'm probably on a hackle gauge. I'm actually a little bit bigger than a size 10. It might be a size eight. And that's just there to design, um, or sorry, that's just there to help um, be a little bit more bolsterous, bigger wings, and help it ride a little higher. That's just the style of the Western Green Drake. So I'm gonna place this just behind, or just in front of my dubbing, just behind that uh, wing. And I'm gonna get some good thread wraps in, in front and behind it to make sure it's secure. You really don't want that to slip out once we've uh, started the process here. And then reach in there and trim out the stem which for me just kind of got up in that, in that wing, like so. And I can put a couple more wraps to make sure that's not going anywhere. Now, my personal preference here is when I go to, to wrap my hackle forward, I actually like to put just a smidge of dubbing, a really light dubbing noodle. I'm gonna make one more, really, really light. And uh, basically just enough of a wisp to cover my thread, make it a couple inches long, and I'm gonna wrap forward to the eye with this dubbing I like how the hackle sits on it a little better and it covers up any of that thread that I might miss in the, the next stage. And I'm just gonna take this right forward to the eye so it doesn't look as beefy as the back portion but it's just having a little bit of, a little bit of dubbing there. Um, so I'm gonna throw in a half hitch right here just to save my work, make sure um, nothing's going anywhere at this point. I'm gonna set this aside while I bring my hackle forward. So now I'm gonna try to get two to maximum three wraps behind the wing so I like that there, that's two. Now I'll make sure I pull the wing forward and try to get at least two more. We'll go maybe one more. Yeah, that's good. I like to a little bit heavier hackle on these, it just helps them ride a little nicer in the water. And then I'm gonna bring my thread back. Make sure I'm capturing from behind that hackle first, then in front, and then repeat. You definitely don't want that hackle to come undone once you've kind of got to this point. So I'll do it a couple times. And I have quite a bit of hackle that's kind of, you're always gonna have these little errant fibers that go wherever. We'll deal with those in a second. 
So now I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna do a half hitch or you can whip finish this. I prefer the half hitch on these flies because I can come in with my tool and actually push some of those um, little pieces of the feather back as you saw there. So pretty simple, two wraps around anything with a little hollow piece on the end. This is an actual half hitch tool. Ride that up over the eye, pull back. Go ahead and trim out your thread. I'll come in here and I'll trim out this hackle. Always being as delicate as you can with these smaller flies. Because you put a lot of work into them, you want them to look pretty good. And that actually, guys, didn't turn out half bad. There you go. There's your Western Green Drake. If you haven't fished one of these or you don't have Green Drakes around, from what we've learned sometimes with some good friends of ours, you just try them whenever and they seem to work anyways, regardless of if you have those bugs on your river. All right, guys, anyways, this has been Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Board Real Fitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. I want to thank you for joining us for another quick tie. We appreciate that you're here. Please like and subscribe to this video and uh, stay tuned for next week. We'll bring you some more flies.